Let's look at how to calculate Pascal's triangle in Python using recursion. So first of all, we have to figure out, well, what is Pascal's triangle? Here is a picture of Pascal's triangle, at least the first few rows. So the idea here is that in this triangle, both sides, the right and the left side, are made up of ones. And each number that's not a one is made up, so for example, the number two is made up of the values of the two numbers above it added together. So this six right here is from the three, and this three is from this one and the two. And the one is just fixed, and the two is made up of these two ones above. All right, so we're going to write a program that will look at the number of lines we want and then print them out. So we're going to say that this top one is line or row number one, and then this column right here, including this one down here, would be column one, and this one over here is column two, and so on, column three. And we can go on forever. Now, one thing we want to decide now is what are the rules for our base case? Well, first of all, we know that if column, if it's column one, and we're trying to calculate out a value for column one, column one is always going to be a value of one. So I can do a, a check. When I receive something I'm trying to figure out for an individual position, if it's column one, then I can just return one. If the column and the row are equal, for example, right here, which would be column two, row two, if they're equal, then it'd be one as well. So this is column, a row three, column three, it's one, and column four, row four, and column five, row five. Every other number is going to be the inductive or recursive case. So for example, this two is not a column one and the column and the row are not the same. So this one right here would be a row three, column two. So if it's those cases, so a row three, column two type case, then it's going to be equal to the two numbers above it. And both the numbers above it are in the previous row. So if this is row three, column two, we want to get row two, column one, and row two, column two. So we want the previous column, and we want the same column. So for example, this uh, three right here is row four, column three, so we're going to want to have the values of row three, column two, and row three, column three. Now that we have an idea of what we're going to do, let's jump into some code. All right, we have a blank document here. Let's go ahead and actually create a file, and then we'll edit that file. So I'm going to create a new text document, and we will call this tech text document Pascal. And we're going to take a number from the command line, and we're going to print that many rows. Go ahead and open that with Notepad++. All right. So in order to get that number from the command line, we're going to import sys and then we're going to write our pascal function so we'll just call it pascal and we're going to pass in a row and a column so our base case and our recursive slash inductive so our base case are those two situations I just talked about. So if the column equals 1, then we want to return 1. 
if the row equals the column, then we want to return one. Now the inductive case is we want to add the two above it. So we're going to return Pascal of it's going to be the previous row, so row minus one, and then the column minus one, plus Pascal of the row minus one, and the current column. So that's all we need to calculate out Pascal's triangle individual values. We're still going to need to print out the entire triangle. But this will give you an idea of how we calculate out individual values. Next, I want to figure out how many rows I'm going to get. So I'll just rows equals. So I'm going to int cast my sys argv1. Once again, you probably want some kind of error correction checking thing here, but we're just going to go through it quickly. And then I want to print out all these rows. So I can do some kind of a for loop. So do for r in range 1, 2, rows plus 1. This will be for each row. And then I need to basically calculate out the number of columns for the row. Now, in row 1, there is exactly one column. So, I will go ahead and do another for loop for C in range 1, comma, R plus 1. Oops. All right, then I need to calculate uh, the value I'm going to be displaying. So I could just do value equals Pascal and pass in my row and my column. So this will give me the value that's supposed to be displayed in Pascal's triangle. Now, at this point, I'm going to be printing out Pascal's triangle, but I'm not going to make it very pretty. I'm just going to make it so it's all um, on the left-hand side so that it you know, it's not made in a nice, pretty, pretty triangle, but it'll still be a triangle, more of a right triangle. Because we want to have each line a bunch of numbers separated, we're going to change the end character for the print statement. So we'll do print value, and we'll do end equals, and we'll just do a space instead of a new line. And that way we can just do space delimited. You could put them into some kind of a, a list, or you could do something else um, to clean them up, maybe tabs. But we're just going to go ahead and put this that way. We're going to have a, an ending space at the end of it all, but that's okay. And then when we get down here, we're going to print out just a new line. So just do regular print. And this should generate everything correctly if I did all my code correctly, which I don't always do. So now we're going to go ahead and run this and see how it goes. So save that, jump to the command line, and I will have in Pascal and pass in number five. And it did not do something correctly. So let's see what we are missing. So index out of range. It looks like my row is correct. So maybe my Windows entire interpreter is not acting correctly. Let's just go ahead and try something different. So I do Python Pascal 5. Yeah, so it's just the um, interpreter is not working correctly. That's fine. Um, so uh, right here you can see that it prints out the five lines. Now, if I try something larger, say 20 lines, maybe 10 lines, 
you can see that we are going through much deeper. One of the issues you'll run into if you do much higher numbers is you will run into your limit for recursion. But it doesn't go that deep anyway. It just goes repeatedly down. And so this is how you can calculate out Pascal's triangle. If I wanted to balance it out, I could by adding spaces in the front. But there's this whole thing about how big does each one want to be. So I can, let's go ahead and just fix that up a bit. Um, so if I say we're going to be printing out on my value, and I'm going to take my value, and we'll make it a space of, say, 5, 4D. So now this will be a fixed size. Save that, and we'll go ahead and run it from the command line. So now you can see they're all fixed sizes. You can see that each one is taking up one, two, three, four spaces. And then it has a space afterwards. So four spaces plus one is five. So now we can indent. Actually, five is not a very good easy number to divide by. So let's go ahead and change that a bit. Let's actually change the end character to be a blank. And then we will make this, uh, let's go make it six. Now we can divide. And then we could even print out something beforehand. So for each row, before we print out the row, we're going to print, print three spaces. One, two, three. Times the number of the row. but with no end. All right. So that should indent beforehand, and the indentation should be... Actually, no, we want the other way around, huh? So we want uh, rows minus R. Save that. Let's take a look at this, and we'll see how our code looks now. except that rows times, I probably need to actually make this a single number instead of some kind of a, a problem. Okay. All right, we'll save that and we'll go ahead and run this. And then we can see Pascal's triangle in kind of a wide array, but that's okay. You can see it's nice and prettily designed out. And you can see the numbers. If I wanted to go higher, I could go to maybe 15. And you can see it splices out even better. But there you get Pascal's triangle in all of its glory using recursive recursive function to calculate out the values. And if you wanted to optimize it more, you could even save values that you had, and that would be more effective. Anyway, there you go.